Because we're out here in the heart of nature breathing in that good ass prana baby <laughs> as Ralph Smart would say. So just wanted to follow up on that last video where I talked about how my mom says that uh, I'm failing at promoting veganism and why that is. I recently finished the book by uh, Leo, I forgot his last name, I'm throw it up on the screen and kind of basically illuminated it for me, the situation that we're in, it's like, it's impossible to actually teach people to do things. We can model things, we can show them things, but it's, no one has ever really been taught how to do something. And that's something that I never really realized before. And when it comes down to it, my parents are basically my role models. So to them, they think that I'm doing something weird, but they don't remember a time when they were not eating meat three, four times a day or animal products three, four times a day. They've always done it. And the thing about it is it's kind of like a slow type of reaction, a slow type of side effect that builds up over time and people don't notice it until it's basically too late. And even then it's like, okay, what, what, do, you, what do you do? Like everyone is doing it. Like, you know, the doctors would know. Um, they would tell you if that's what the issue was and you know, why why am why isn't society pointing a finger at it and it's crazy because it's not like the doctors don't know and they're just keeping the secret for themselves they they don't know either and uh i work at a pharmacy so it's interesting to just to see the quantity of amount of drugs that people are taking for basically preventable illnesses and it's like the drugs don't really make them healthier they just prevent the symptoms so they don't die too fast but it has side effects and those side effects need to be countered. And it's so interesting because people realize that diabetes is caused by food, but they're pointing the finger at carbohydrates and just blanketly at carbohydrates. Like carbohydrates are the problem that's causing it when really it's just a symptom of basically how it was explained. Maybe I can put a chart up on the screen. Um, there's fat that ends up getting inside of the muscle tissue and it prevents the mechanism of insulin from acting on the on the system, the body system properly. So Studies dating back nearly a century noted a striking finding. If you take young healthy people and split them up into two groups, half on a fat-rich diet and the other half on a carb-rich diet, within just two days this is what happens the glucose intolerance skyrockets in the fatty diet group. In response to the same sugar water challenge, the group that had been shoveling in fat ended up with twice the blood sugar. As the amount of fat in the diet goes up, so does one's blood sugar spikes. It would take scientists nearly seven decades to unravel this mystery, but it would end up holding the key to our current understanding of the cause of type 2 diabetes. So it's like you need more and more insulin because like the key that controls insulin gets gunked up. But there's a second way we could end up with high blood sugar. What if there's enough insulin, but the insulin doesn't work? The key is there, but something, something's gummed up the lock. This is called insulin resistance. Our muscle cells become resistant to the effect of insulin. What's gumming up the door locks in our muscle cells, preventing insulin from letting sugar in? Fat. Endless cycle. And it's interesting, there was a doctor who did something like with a rice, it was like a rice diet, and it's like the people didn't even want to be on the rice diet. He actually had to like feed them, but he fed them nothing but rice. And they actually lost weight. They lost weight and they cured their diabetes. So. There's something that's definitely missing in, in popular knowledge and popularism. I mean, I still get people telling me like, you know, carbohydrates are going to make you fat, yet I eat nothing but carbohydrates and I'm in the perfect weight level. And before, when I was eating animal products and doing the ketogenic diet and uh, working at it from that point of view where it's like, okay, I'm just going to do paleo, keto, keep my fats high, keep my proteins high, and just eliminate all carbohydrates. It was not sustainable, first of all. My health deteriorated. My mental health deteriorated. 
and as soon as I would have carbs it's like my body just couldn't handle the carbs anymore so it's kind of like I did damage during that time and it's like I've tried so many different diets and I mean I can show you my results from starting this new way of eating where I've completely cut out all oils I've cut out all oils I've cut, I've cut out high fat foods because it was just an idea that that was presented to me by Dr. McDougall he says that it's impossible to overeat on whole foods so I took that idea as fact as literal truth and I actually applied it to my life and I did cut out all of the fats and all of the high fats food high fats high fat foods and I was actually able to get really lean and it's not like I'm losing weight I'm doing your body recomposition I'm in a healthy BMI so why would I want to lose weight I've already built muscle and for me the problem has always been just letting that muscle show through and I always thought like you know eating meat would would solve the problem and it would it would work but really it doesn't work it just it doesn't um, I don't know any meat eater who's not constantly starving themselves to stay at a good weight and even then like it's just it's such a torture so me just telling you you can't eat animal foods you can't eat oils it leaves some of you with this huge vacuum and you say I will never survive until I tell you what you're supposed to eat here's what you're supposed to eat you're supposed to eat starch you are a starchivore, you are a starchitarian, you are a starch eater. Until you figure that out, you're lost. You're totally out of control, you're hungry, you can't understand why every time you eat you gain weight, why every time you eat your stomach hurts, you can't understand why you don't have energy. You just can't understand why the picture doesn't come together for you until you understand that you're a starch eater. Human beings are starch eaters, always have been, always will be. And it's the way you solve food poisoning is you substitute fat, which is from animal foods or vegetable oils, you substitute that energy source for sugar, which is the starch in plants. So that's, your, that's the way you solve poof poison is you eat starch, and along with that starch, you can have some non-starchy, greeny yellow vegetables, but not much. Just a little, I know some of you have tried to have a lot. You've tried to be nutritarians. You've tried to live on kale and broccoli and cauliflower and cabbage, and you say something's wrong. I'm starving to death. Well, of course you are. That's not your food. Nobody's ever lived on a cabbage or kale diet. Never happened, never will happen. It's not enough energy. Now you can have some of this kale, some of these sprouts, you know, a little lettuce, a little celery. You can have some of that as a side dish. For those of you who are trying to be vegetarians or vegans living on these non-starchy, green yellow vegetables, give it up. It's not gonna work. You're not gonna feel well. Your stomach will be growling. You're gonna be hungry all the time. Why? because you have not tapped into a high energy source, which is known as starch. You need that energy. You have to chase starch. You can add some green yellow vegetables as a side dish, maybe 5%, maybe 10%. If you want to push it, maybe 30% by eyeball. And you can have a little bit of fruit too. A little fruit, but not a lot. You're hungry quite quickly after eating fruit. That's why I have known very few fruitarians in my entire career. Steve Jobs tried for a while, not long. A few other friends that you know have tried to be fruitarians. Occasionally they can do it with some effort, but no population has ever lived on a fruit-based diet, not that I know of. So your diet, when you decide to give up food poisoning, is a diet of starches. Starches, yes, starches the center of your meal plan with some fruits and vegetables. Once you stop the food poisoning, what happens is the body spontaneously cures. This is the miracle. This is why, uh, so you can have some tofu, some soybeans, they're a little high fat, a little high protein. I don't think they should be the center of your diet, but as a condiment, they're fine. Nuts and seeds, you can eat some nuts and seeds, unless you want to lose weight. If you live on nuts and seeds, you're going to be what is known as a fat vegan. If you want a few fruit drinks here and there, fine. Better to eat your fruits whole and vegetables whole. S spices and salt and sugar, we use salt, sugar, and spice. Many of you think of these as food poisonings. Yeah, but not like oil and not like animal foods. Those are the ones that are really sickening you and your family. If you have to focus on something to solve your problems, focus on the animal foods and the oils. The salt, the sugar, the spices, well, maybe not exactly health food, but then again, they might be. And they sure make the difference as to whether you're gonna eat the food or not. That's the main reason that we use a little salt, sugar, and spice in the food, is I want you to eat the food. I want you to like your starches. If I make them salt-free, chances are you're not gonna like them. If I put a little bit of salt in the food, I bet you're gonna like it. People love salt. Naturally, you are designed as a salt seeker. Remember the tip of your tongue. It has taste buds 
which taste salt and sugar with pleasure. That wasn't a mistake. And, you know, looking at it through evolutionary lens, we were designed, we have two things going for us. We are, we are very intelligent, right? We're super intelligent, uh, great apes. And our brains are huge. What caused that? You know, that's, that's something that people have theories on. Um, one theory that I believe is that it was caused because we started cooking our food. And also at that time, I mean, we were also hunting to get calories. And we actually basically hunted all the, the great, you know, mammals on this earth to extinction because they reproduce so slowly. And who knows, maybe we were even cannibals and we, we killed the Neanderthals. It doesn't look good for, for us. I mean, we forget that there were other races of human um, not just sapiens, there's, there's other races, there's Denisovans, there's dwarves, there was Homo erectus. I mean, Homo erectus, I think they've been around for, what was it, uh, I think the, the number is like 2 million years or something like that, or two, 200,000 years, one of those numbers. And I'm getting this information from the book Sapiens by uh, Yuval Harari. And what's interesting is that he, he talks about how human beings they might not, we might not even be around for as long as Homo erectus was around. And those were like, you know, the, the, the beginning of like humanity, like the beginning of, of human beings, like coming from the great apes to like walking on two legs. And he talks about how in Africa, the animals there knew to avoid humans. But when we somehow figured out how to sail and get across to Australia, there were like 42 different types of marsupials over a ton that reproduce very slowly they have a little pouch they're a breed of mammals something like that and they, they have a little pouch and like that's how they they go through their like infancy until they're able to to walk and it's like we don't look threatening so it, the, those big animals did not know that they should avoid us so we basically hunted all them to death and i think it's just basically it comes down to our genetics i mean we were in a situation where we needed to to survive we needed the calories and it was like you know most of our calories came from from uh plants from carbohydrates and you know that's we're, we live in a very masculine centered world so that's what we romanticize like you know the men went out and hunted but really it was like the women and children gathering like berries and bushes and and basically i believe what dr mcdougall says is that we are starch wars. so they were, they figured out how to uh get potatoes from the earth and there's there's a starch everywhere in like almost every climate i gotta look into that i'm not exactly sure but that's what i that's what i was told even today most of our calories come from from carbohydrates but it's just interesting that this is the world that we live in kind of falling into this trap that's why mcdonald's and kfc is like in every city in every town you're gonna find uh those type of restaurants because basically we're being exploited. We have uh, taste receptors that love salty and fatty foods. And in all of our evolution, we've never had free fats. So the body has no idea what to do with free fats. And like basically how much of our food is just loaded with, with oil and fat. And, you know, people say that, you know, meat is lean and this and that, but the leanest cut of meat, the most cardboard tasting piece is still 20% fat. So if you are what you eat, that ratio is going to express itself in our body. And I mean, it's sad because seven out of 10 Americans is overweight and the rest of the world is on track to follow and people don't know why. And it's like, if you're just told to eat more meat, you know, fat is good. It's like we have been hijacked because like we're craving nutrition, but we don't have nutrition. We just get like large doses of, of excessive macronutrients and little plant fragments and processed food which statistically re increases your chance of dying from from like all, all cause mortality so that means all causes of death so that's what i'm feeling of promoting veganism i mean what what can i do you know we're gonna we're gonna outlive them we're gonna outrun them and it's just a matter of time. I mean, in the United States, I think it's like 0.4% uh, was like a couple of years ago uh, of, 
of how many vegans there are, but in the world, there's I think there are, are more than four four um, percent. So it's just interesting that this is this is the world we live in. People won't even give it a try. People think that we need dairy to live, we need like animal products to live. Like there are living examples of athletes and bodybuilders and um, great inventors like you know Albert Einstein and Tesla. Um, who were like vegetarian vegans, you know, and it's just sad that this is this is what it's come down to. I mean, we don't even like to look at the process of how the food is made. We don't like to look at the process of the abattoirs. Farmers always show like the docile animals and pretend like everything's okay. Um, and people buy into it. People buy into it, and it's just it's it's sad. Um, but all I can do is just continue to just be a beacon in the light and in, in the darkness, right? I'm like a ship. Uh, wait, how is it? I can be a beacon for the ships in the dark because at least I can save some of the ships. I, my job is not to save all of them. I mean, a lot of people are just going to have to learn the hard way. And the inflammation the pain i see it all the time and it you know people say that they've tried low fat diets but they have not really tried uh lower than 10 percent. and then the other thing is like how can you live on such low body fat well if you're carrying fat on your on your body you're gonna start burning that fat off so you're not gonna you know die if you eat nothing but whole foods and you know there is a certain ratio of like omega-3s to keep in mind which are, which are healthy and you can easily reach that number so so far my cut has been going good i'm healthier i i feel like i have more energy i've eliminated oil um my parents still have not joined the vegan club or vegetarian or even willing to try it and that's that's the part that i find the most funny is that without even doing it for seven days seven day vegan challenge they automatically put it down and it's like you know they they do fast my parents do fast um a couple times a year for like you know diwali or like different hindu things where it's prescribed to not eat any meat but they'll load up on cheese or they'll have milk every day and you know it's like they wonder why they're unhealthy um and you know it's it is what it is so i'm going to keep going where, where i'm going I'm gonna keep working hard at it and I mean I don't know all the, the greatest recipes but I'm gonna keep working at it and and I'm seeing results and I feel great and my life my life feels awesome so it's just it's just frustrating that popular what's popular is incorrect and it's like you know there's a quote like my job the the, the it, it's like something about escaping the insanity of the masses and that's what our job here on earth is is to escape the insanity of the masses of people and you know i was reading uh the book by the guy who made palantir uh what is it elon musk's friend he's talking about how what is that one idea that's contradictory to like everyone else you know and that one idea to me is basically veganism is the, the truth the fact that we don't do not need animal products to live and it actually makes us unhealthy and even he talks about on his book how he was pointing the finger at like it's carbohydrates that did it and how it's big agriculture that's causing this this issue that we're having but we're still having the issue with big agriculture because the USDA was made by Lincoln to help farmers in like you know 1816 or some long time ago and then it was also given the other task of prescribing what's healthy for American people. So it can't serve two owners because one of them is a big business saying like, you know, you need to sell our products. And the other one is saying, hey, this is what's healthy for you. And they actually did studies where they found out that cholesterol is unhealthy and saturated fat, fat is unhealthy. So the guidelines had to change, but they couldn't say stop eating meat and dairy products because that would hurt the big business, the farmers. So what they did was they just started macro at everything. So they said, well, you, you shouldn't eat uh, cholesterol and you shouldn't eat saturated fat. Limit, limit those and, um, and eat a lot of protein. So they're, they're, they're 
kind of winking at, at hey eat more meat and they're saying also like hey meat is bad for you so it's there is kind of a a contradiction there so in closing i just like to say there is hope and it is worth trying i mean i never thought that i would be a vegan i, I never if you asked me five years ago i would never be i never would have said that i never would have had that as a criteria for people that I would go out with and as where I'm going to take my life in the future and everything that I do I want it to revolve around that and all I can do is be that beacon in the darkness to save some of those ships some of the people who want to know and I'm teaching what I know I have that, that's that's who I want to work with I want to work with those people who are willing to to give it a shot so let me know what you guys think. If you have any questions about what I'm talking about, please share this video, please subscribe. And thank you for tuning in. I love you guys so much. And I can't wait to bring you more information and really grow this platform and share everything that I know. I'm constantly in a new book. I'm constantly like exposing myself to new ideas. And it's like, I start forgetting about what it is. I'm like, oh, I should make a video. And I know I was late with this one. So my commitment is going to be to continue to make videos continue to put out information and to teach the information that I'm learning that way I can also internalize it and keep a catalog of like how I've grown and like the things that I've learned so thank you guys so much please like share comment subscribe do all that good stuff I love you so much take care have a wonderful day peace